Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are at the VM Women at VM World 2015. It's a little side presentation that they put on. We had a great uh, panel discussion and I'm really excited to be joined by our next panelist, Renee Zog, the VP IT Infrastructure and Development for Services at Aetna. Welcome. Well, thank you, thank you. It was a great time here. It great was turnout. a great time. It was, a, it was a full packed room and everyone was listening with rapt attention. And it was both men and women, it wasn't just women, it was diverse. Yeah, and, absolutely. And that's what we need. So you made some great comments on the panel that I, I'm really excited to follow up with. And one of them was really to be purposeful and with intention, that this just doesn't happen accidentally. Things just don't change for the sake of change. Right. I mean, the, the discussion earlier was about unconscious bias and how no one does that intentionally. It's in our fabric of how we grew up and how our preferences are. And so it's so easy to sit back and do what you're used to versus doing something uncomfortable. And in order to change the game, you really have to force yourself in asking those probing questions and think about, am I really introducing change or am I just doing the same? And as leaders in our industry, we need to disrupt, we need to innovate, and you're not going to do it with the same people. So um, we want the best talent, and if you don't do it with intention in the processes of your day-to-day -day work efforts, nothing's ever going to change. So how do you execute that day-to-day? -day? Is it within a particular process where maybe you spend a little bit more time thinking about it? I mean, we're all busy, we have a gajillion emails and right. meetings and we're racing to and fro. Is it kind of in the hiring process? Where, where is it that you can kind of take a half step back and be purposeful and intentional? Or, or have you been able to execute it and kind of work it into the way you do things? It's, it's more of the latter. I think institutional is something that big enterprises need to do around hiring practices, around pay practices and, and merits and promotions. But the things that you can do day to day are like work assignments. Um, you know how you always go to your, your go-to people? Everybody has their go-to people. Um, stop doing that. Go to somebody else, and know what you're going to find is that the go-to people are exhausted, <laughs> right? <laughs> they welcome somebody else coming into their space and helping them up, and what you're doing is you're developing somebody else and getting a different perspective. And I, I found that there was this one, one um, work product, we did the same for years, you know, it was more of this management reporting, and, and it was very good, and it was fine, um, but it wasn't until I said, my go-to person was, wasn't around and I, who's going to do this? And I got, you know, Sally to do it. And she said, why do you do it this way? <laughs> right? right? We could do it much better than that and a lot quicker. And, and as a result, I got a, a much better product and I got just different thinking. And oh, by the way, now I'm her advocate. Yeah. Right? So it's something you can do very easily in your day-to-day -day practice, but you need to be intentional about it. Right. So the other thing I thought you talked about, which was interesting, is kind of mentorship and sponsorship, and you just said that you're now Sally's advocate in your right. example. Um, but you know, it goes beyond what you mentioned, just you know, being helpful and how can I help you, right. et cetera, and, and you really talked about it. You, you're, you basically turned the conversation into the conversation of business in this context, because that's right. the language that people respect. Dig into that a little bit deeper. How did you come up with that, and, and how do people respond to that? Well, one of the things that, uh, this ha actually came from my own introspection, right? Uh, we had done a, a little bit of a, uh, a, a leadership summit where we had to get feedback from my peers on my style of leadership. And it was, believe it or not, very communal, right? That's to be expected. So one, my aha moment there was when one of my peers said, you know, Renee, you need to brag about yourself, about your accomplishments, about your organization, what they've done. You've done some amazing things. You've taken millions and millions of dollars out. And I said, geez, you know, I'm not comfortable bragging. And he said, you're not doing it for you. You're doing it for your organization. Oh, wow. So that was a real turning point for me to give me permission to brag. I brag everywhere I go now. Right? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, I'm really not bragging about myself. I'm bragging about my organization. 
or in their accomplishments and their capability and their innovation. Uh, oh, by the way, it's helping me, you know, bring up their value and what they contribute to the firm. So they're, you know, so I, I encourage my leaders to do the same and it'll, you know, keep rolling on. It's so, that's really interesting because Lori gave us a challenge during this, during the talk to sit down and write some attributes about ourselves and mm -hmm. some accomplishments about ourselves. We're sitting at a table with probably six or seven people. No one wrote anything for like minute 40 of the two minutes that right. we had allocated. And I took to my partner, I was like, well, write something about somebody else that you like. And it's so much easier to say nice things about other people. So what you've done is twisted that and changed talking about you into not talking about you. So now it's easier to talk about you because right. it has a bigger purpose. Exactly. <laughs> and in a delivery, just like she said, is that I'm not necessarily, you know, I'm the game changer. You know, I took $120 million out in two years. That's different. Big number. Yeah. yeah. And it's like instantly, okay, wow, okay, all right, okay, you got yeah, my attention. That's something, right? right? Show me, even when I'm dealing with the vendors and their products, show me how you can make a difference to my bottom. You know, it commands respect when you start, uh, start to talk about the numbers, the business, the value, all of those things. All right, so I'm going to give you the last word, even okay. though that was kind of the last word. Um, <laughs> You know, again, what advice for, for, for young women just out of college, getting started in their career, early days? You know, we've talked about they don't, haven't necessarily been encouraged to take risks as much right. as, as young kids. What, you know, you get a fresh crop to come in, you get to walk in the room and, and introduce yourself and, you know, welcome to Aetna. What do you tell them? I tell them that everything's the art of the possible. When I started at Aetna, I was hanging tapes on the night shift in the data center. <laughs> yeah. No one even knows. Everyone's like, "What is? No, what does no, it the take?" Tape, right? The big round ones. The big round ones, right? Um, so, so I had a lot of advocates, but I also delivered the goods, right? And I took a lot of risk, and I didn't necessarily have all the boxes checked. And that, to me, is exciting. And if you can jump into something where you know you have some boxes to check, and you're going to learn them along the way, you're going to succeed. Yeah. And check them, right? Yeah. Be, the, be the person yeah, that checks them. them. Right, exactly. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much thank for stopping by. Welcome. Terrific panel. Uh, Jeff Rick here. We're at the VM Women at VMware side panel. Uh, Jeff Rick with the Cube. Thanks for watching.